Aloha and welcome to Connection to the Cosmos with your host, me, Dr. Lisa Thompson, where I have out of this world conversations with extraordinary people. And today I have on Krista Gray. So looking forward to chatting with her, but just a couple of announcements first. If you have not downloaded my 20 minute free meditative journey to meet your galactic family and guides, make sure you grab that on my website, mysticmanta.com um, or drlisajthompson.com. And if you're coming to Hawaii, to the big island, come see me on one of my big island UFO tours where you will see the night sky in a whole new way using the advanced generation three military night vision goggles. And you can find more information on my website at BigIslandUFOTours.com. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on Krista. Hello. Hello. Hi. So I'm excited to talk to you because we have quite a bit in common. Um, but mm -hmm. so let me share with the audience your bio and then we'll just jump right in. Great. Okay. So Krista Gray is an entrepreneur, intuitive, energy worker, Akashic Records practitioner, and designer. She runs a successful six-figure home staging company and is now helping other spiritually-minded entrepreneurs and emerging entrepreneurs live their most energetically successful lives with her business, Redefined Energy. She currently offers Akashic Record readings focused on business and personal growth. She is also in the middle of launching a group container, Aligned Interior, which is focused on energetically aligning her clients' homes with their ideal self to call in more abundance and aligned success. She enjoys all things in spirituality, ETs, cosmic consciousness, health and fitness, personal development and manifestation, living a conscious life, and spending time with her two French bulldogs and everyday life with her husband. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, I mentioned in the email when we were first chatting that I used to have a home staging company. Yeah, it's such a small world. Oh my gosh, I love I that. I transitioned into having my spiritual business six years ago and I was running both simultaneously for a few years. That's what I'm doing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, so before we get into all of that, um, first, I just want to understand like your background in terms of how you grew up spiritual, religious, something else to get into this more like energy and intuitive work that you do. Yeah. So um, I didn't grow up religious or spiritual. Nothing was really like put on me. I mean, my family like went to church maybe like on Easter and Christmas, but like wasn't really like into it, into it. Um, so, I mean, I was baptized as I guess Methodist, but mm. was impressed on me. And um, I just kind of, anytime I, I remember being a little girl in church and being like, why, why do I have to come here to connect like this? I don't feel like I have to be here to, you know, like I was like, we can connect anywhere like this. And I felt like the Bible was so um, regimented and constricting. And I was just like, even as a young child, I was just like, I kind of know that there's more. And um, growing up, um, I my mom passed away when I was in high school. And so that really triggered me. Um, I was already kind of open to spirituality, but that really took me on my journey to like connect further, got into like mediumship and, and all of the signs and angel numbers and all of that and um, to connect with her. And so that was kind of like the catalyst. And from there, um, I've had multiple friends that are into spirituality. And my one friend is actually medium. And I feel like she was my activator. She was the trailblazer that kind of showed me that it's okay to um, get into this. And um, from there, I just kind of took it on my own. Um, and then I would say in 2020, actually, I had another like huge spiritual awakening where I, I've always believed in ETs. Mm -hmm. um, I also believe in spirituality and then there's science. So I was like, there has to be something where all these connect, like there has to be, there has to be something. Yes. And then um, I came across a Dr. Stephen Greer and all of his work. And it was like all connected. I got really into consciousness and found the Akashic records. And from there, I've just dove in deeper. So yeah, I'm fully woo woo now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm curious because like when I was simultaneously running, you know, my design company and I had to be in kind of that more mainstream world, mm -hmm. really, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, and people taking me, me as credible, you know, mm -hmm. um, crazy. I, mm -hmm. I wasn't at the time. I didn't feel like I could 
show my ET side. Mm -hmm. And then when I came out, the first um, modality I got trained in was past life regression therapy. Mm -hmm. And so when I started my spiritual business and people are like, um, what? <laughs> because a lot of the real estate agents were a little more conservative or, you know, not, not necessarily open to that. Not that, not all of them, but yeah. yeah. It was kind of weird balancing those worlds. And I'm curious, do you find that where you are? And where are you in the world? Where do you yeah, well, I was just about to say, so I'm in Northern Virginia, right outside of Washington, D.C. Okay. So yes, um, we have a lot of conservative people. And then there's also like some, you know, funky people around here. But um, it's a, it's really conservative. A lot of people work in the military. A lot of people are work for the government around here. Um, it's really... Yeah, it's not the spiritual hub. <laughs> Let's just say that. Um, and so I do find that with um, some of the agents that I work with, um, I don't, I, I kind of call it like spiritual closet. Um, okay. I mentioned certain things here and there, like I'll talk about energy. I'm like, well, the energy flow in here is this, or um, I wear sometimes an angel number necklace. And if one of them asks about the necklace, I'll be like, oh, it's an angel number. It means like, you know, so like I'll be open if they ask. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say right now I am balancing both. So, um, on my personal social media, I am out of the spiritual closet. I will talk about it. I have the little alien emoji in my bio. I love it. Um, but with my business, um, my staging business, uh, social media, it's yeah. very much more mainstream. I do say, um, that I'm an interior energetic expert. So that's kind of like a little bit Woo woo. <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah, we'll see how it unfolds over the years. But I feel like my soul is calling me to kind of fully dive into the spiritual side of things. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of working on um, building the staging business up so I can run it fully without me and then seeing where that takes me after that. Okay. And that's exactly what I did. <laughs> so, <laughs> we need to talk about that. Yeah. We'll talk about offside and yeah, yeah. at, at the end doing that. Um, you know, it allowed me to move here to Hawaii, Yeah, what a um, dream. but it was also then during COVID and the real mm -hmm. estate market tanked and anyway, it, that was a whole mess. So mm -hmm. I no longer have that company, but that's allowed me to focus fully on the spiritual stuff. Cause I was feeling that call too, just like you, I'm like, okay, you know, staging design, it's fun, but it's not like fulfilling my passion that's anymore. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's the fulfillment piece. Like, um, I definitely have a passion for design and staging and like that interaction with the clients as they're going through that process of like, mm -hmm. um, transitioning homes and it is an emotional thing. And so that's where I feel like my empathy and, you know, my energetics can really help, but yeah, yeah there's something calling me to, um, pursue my spiritual passion, my like purpose, my life's purpose. Yeah. Okay. Well, so let's talk about i guess your the akashic records mm, yeah. you know, so how do you tap into that and are you highly visual are you clear you know are you clairvoyant clair audience all the clairs this makes me so excited yeah so um in 2020 um i didn't even know what the akashic records was like when i first was becoming spiritual and then um i saw this show on um gaia which is like spiritual netflix <laughs> basically yeah. and um they were talking about this akasha records reader and i was like instantly really drawn to her and um i don't know if you know who debbie solaris is that's who it was and um i just found out what it was from there and then i listened to some of her readings and i was like um, I got a book on it and started to practice on myself. And then I was drawn to take a course in it. And, um, even when I was practicing on myself, I would get like little movies in my head and stuff like that. But then after I did the course and I really focused a lot of hours in the records and practicing, what I realized is that I, um, actually hear Claire audibly, like I can, hear uh, messages and I'm actually able to channel channel them as I'm speaking to a client and I do see images and little movies play in my head and what I found is that this isn't really normal <laughs> so <laughs> they're like this isn't normal even for the Kashuk records usually people get like an overwhelming knowing um not many people see things or um hear things in their thoughts voice mm -hmm. so um as I explored it further I found that 
it was for me more of a remembering. Like I was remembering how to do this. It, it didn't feel new to me. It felt natural, kind of like design. I actually yeah. don't have an interior design degree. It came naturally to yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> so the Akashic Records um, came natural to me. And it's something that like, I, I just know I'm really good at it. It just flows and I, I love it. Okay. So what um, have you discovered, I guess, in your own records that's mm -hmm. been like really an aha or eye-opening kind of thing for you? Yeah. So um, I think some of the things that stand out the most for me is like, I will ask one question and your ego or your, you know, your logical mind is thinking it's going to go one way. Yeah. And the records are like, mm -mm. <laughs> it goes a totally different way. And some really deep stuff has come up. Um, I've actually seen visions of um, myself in past lives. And one of the things that um, I was asking about, for instance, was uh, why do I have this feeling of um, having to work really hard and prove myself and not allowing things to be easy, right? In business, in life. And um, what came through was this past life. And I was um, a man in this life and I lived on the streets. I was like a baker um, in like a Middle Eastern country. And what happened was this, um, I guess we'll call her noble woman or, you know, a higher up um, in the classes woman. Uh, found me and took me in and took me into her court and basically like gave me a free ride. Like I was in her court from then on and like basically treated like royalty. And I was like one of her advisors okay. and what came through, um, through that life through, you know, residually is now in this life, I feel this guilt for getting the easy way out. So in this lifetime, um, I have this feeling of like, I need to prove um, and make it out myself. I need to get there myself. Um, so then there's some inner work being like, I don't have to do that. It's okay to let it be easy and accept the help and support. And so that's something that, you know, my inner journey is taking me on. Okay. Now that's actually kind of parallel to how, what's going on with me right now. I, I have a friend that just last week did an Akashic Records reading for me. And that was something that kind of came up for me as well. So yeah. We yeah. have a lot of parallel. <laughs> I love that. Well, you're meant to, you know, you're meant to speak to people in certain time frames yeah. and it just lines up. Yeah. I, you know, synchronicities. Right. Absolutely. So, um, how then are you working with the Akashic Records for mm -hmm. business and personal growth with your clients? Like, what did they come to you for? Yeah. So, um, I tend, I, you know, I can do Akashic readings for anyone. However, I found that, um, kind of doing them for entrepreneurs because I've experienced um, going through building a business without the um, spiritual side of things. And when I intermix both of them, it like, it just like made everything so much easier, made things click, made things flow better. I was mentally happier. And so um, I like to help entrepreneurs or emerging entrepreneurs um, be able to experience um, personal development in a new light where, you know, they might ask a business question, like, how can I draw in more clients? And mm -hmm. then in the Akashic records, it might be something totally, um, focused on themselves about self-love and, and loving yourself more. And so it's something that really directs, um, someone that may be more focused on strategy and, um, helps them see strategy in a new light. Maybe, you know, it's personal, um, self-care is what you actually need in order to get more clients, you know, and sometimes they don't think about that. So what I found is that it's people um, that are looking for an easier flow in their business, um, how to expand their business, um, what limiting beliefs are holding them back from expansion within their business. And um, that's, those are kind of the questions I get. And a lot of times, um, what I'll, what I'll hear in the records is that these people, they already know, they already know what to do. And yeah. it's like the validation, hearing it from, from their higher self through the records. Um, it really like resonates with them more. And so I get a lot of that too. Okay. Yeah. But that makes sense. Cause I mean, people are, they doubt what yeah. their own wisdom, their own information. And so, yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. And I, I feel like it's, so the records, it's more of like, it's universal consciousness and your higher self. So your higher self, obviously you're connected to that. You're also connected to universal consciousness without a reader. So that's why it feels familiar. It's like you already knew this information because mm -hmm. you do, because <laughs> you're connected to it already. <laughs> yeah. So it just like allows people to trust themselves more. Okay. Well, so staying on this Akashic Records kind of stream at the moment. Um, so Debbie Solaris obviously is very, well, maybe the audience doesn't know, but she is very much into the galactic world mm -hmm. um, and the Akashic Records of the, the galactic history, right? Yeah. And so is that something when you were training with her, was that something that you guys were exploring and that comes up regularly now with mm -hmm. your clients mm -hmm. or is it earth-based life mm -hmm. so i didn't train with debbie solaris but um i she was like my um the gateway drug <laughs> well, let's say yeah, yeah but um i have definitely had instances where it will go and relate back to um pre-earth mm -hmm. but i haven't had anyone yet that has asked it's all about the questions you ask or the client okay. asks. So yeah. I haven't had anyone ask a question that um, relates to that information quite yet. So okay. I haven't been able to like dive into that. However, I know it's there and I know it's available. So, you know, yeah. Have you asked for your own self? Yeah, yeah. So for my own self, um, what I've got is, um, it's also validation because these are things that, again, you know deep down. Um, I've gotten that I I don't know where my soul, or first originated from, but I definitely had a lifetime in, um, Lyra. Um, and I experienced trauma in that lifetime because, um, there was like destruction in, mm -hmm. in that lifetime. If you're familiar with her, um, her yeah. galactic history. And so <clears throat> I've actually had dreams of, of this, um, where before I knew what the connection was, I thought it was some random, crazy, um, action, real life dream. I was like, why does this dream feel so real? It feels like a memory. And it was so intense and so detailed. Yeah. And I remember it years later. Like I can, I can, you know, I can picture it in my mind right now. And, um, what it is, is actually a memory from, from that experience. Um, and I've also had, um, I definitely have had some kind of elemental energy too, because I, um, have had in the records, they've shown me like, um, like, I always describe it because they'll show me images, right? And so an image is a thousand words, but it's kind of like you have to interpret what you see. And I've been shown like a Venn diagram and you know how Venn diagrams kind of like they go over each other, they overlap. It right. was like my essence and like a tree um, nature kind of overlapping. So that makes me think it was like some kind of um, elemental energy there too. Right. Yeah. Okay. When ha have you tapped in for your husband? No, um, I do believe that he um, had an experience with me and Lyra and I have some kind of, I have like a little bit of a, a gut feeling that we have a little bit of a twin flame thing going on um, because I know everyone says that, but, so I don't, I don't know for sure, but there, when I first met him, it was like seeing myself. I, I, the first thing I said was like, he's like the male version of me. Okay. And, um, so it was like a, a soul recognition. And then, I mean, we definitely had like the twin flame, like craziness over the years. So that, that, um, that definitely resonates. And I feel like he, him and I have had met like for a long, long time ago, have had lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes together. So, yeah, but he's more, so he isn't all, he's not all into the woo. He supports me and accepts me and lets me do my thing, but he's not, you know, laying out all the Oracle cards with crystals with me. He, yeah. he lets me do it <laughs> and he'll maybe let me pull a card or two for him, but yeah. My husband's the same way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so as far as the energy work that you do, can you talk more about that? Like, are you actually working to do something similar to Reiki or is it more the energetics of the homes or both? Yeah. So I, I'm not certified in Reiki, um, but one is the energetics of the home. So I have my own methodology. Um, I don't follow traditional feng shui. However, there are some elements of feng shui that make sense and do resonate. Um, yeah. but I have a whole process where 
Um, we clear the energy of the home. We set intentions with the items that are surrounding you because everything has a consciousness and an energy, whether you recognize it or not. Yes. And why not recognize it <laughs> and set an intention? So um, I have a whole process where I do that and then like invite in, um, you know, the angels to bless the bless the space and all of that. So that's one form of energy work that I work with clients with. But the mm -hmm. other form is in the records. I actually, I guess you would call them an Akashic clearing or healing. Um, when I, when I'm told or when it seems fit to do so, um, where someone has had some kind of trauma um, in a past life or, you know, in their childhood hood or whatever. And we actually can do some energy work with that, um, either your inner child or that past life version of you and do some healing work there um, so that as you move forward, um, the healing continues and um, like move forward in this lifetime, in this timeline, the healing yeah. continues um, for that version of yourself. So yeah, there's some Akashic energy work and then home energetics too. Okay. So for you, I, well, tell me more about the group that you are creating, the Aligned Interior. Yeah, so it's it's more of like a, um, I would call it like a, a mastermind course. So over a month, I am um, inviting and um, having people sign on to do the Aligned Interior with me, which is we go through your entire home um, or your office space, whatever you spend most time in, and we do that energy work. So we clear out old stagnant energy. We um, are very intentional about what is in our space. And then we set the intention that we want um, that's aligned with our future self that we want to bring in mm -hmm. um, with that, with the items around you. And then I do a home blessing and I do a whole clearing and a meditation. And um, this is broken up over four weeks. So the first week we do one set of things, the second week this, and and then um, the third week I actually um, teach my method so that they're able to do this for themselves. Um, I usually say like quarterly, you know, as the seasons change or whenever they want. So that's kind of the benefit of um, signing up is that you get to learn the method. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, again, we're very um, synchronistic yeah. in the way that we approach design. I actually wrote a book called Sacred Soul Spaces. Oh my God. Outlines what you just talked about. So I love this. <laughs> I don't, I don't work with clients in that way anymore. So um, do you work with clients remotely in addition to like in person? In mm -hmm. Yeah, I have that offer. So um um, aligned interior is the group program. And then I have, it's funny, a switch on words, interior alignment sessions. Though that's when I personally work with, um, one individual and we have a whole session where we focus on just your space and we do like a, um, a live in like virtual, but in real time clearing. Okay. Yeah, so I offer that too. Okay. So people, so if someone is watching or listening to this and they do not live in your immediate area, you could still work with them. Yeah. Well, both are virtual. So aligned interior, the group program is, is virtual. It's on zoom so that like people anywhere can, yeah. can access it. Cause I, yeah, I think that this, this information is so important, especially for people that are spiritually aware and mm -hmm. may not think about this. They may not think about their surroundings so much. Um, but yeah. it's really important. <laughs> Is. Well, and I mean, the whole premise that my book and everything that I was doing back in the, that time was around was environment is stronger than willpower. Buck oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> We're so aligned. Yes, I agree. I agree. I agree. And yes. So when when you think of environment, you know, really, it's not it is physical, but like the colors, they all have their own psychology and physiology mm -hmm. that they stir up in people. Yeah. There's the clutter, there's like you said, the imagery that you're putting in front of you. There's the sounds, the smells. Yes. Yes. That's exactly, yeah, that's exactly what we go through. Yeah. I mean, and it's, and it's related to real science. I mean, they start painting the walls of prisons pink because pink is a neutralizing, relaxing color. I mean, there's science behind this stuff. Um, if you're, yeah, if your house is super cluttered, then, you know, your mind is cluttered because there's a bunch of stuff around you that like, isn't allowing you to have a clear mind, a clear space. So, yeah, I mean, it's not just 
the woo woo. It really is backed by science too. It is. And that's, yeah, that's my, you know, my degree is in biology. And so that whole like physiology thing, you know, yeah. what it's doing to you. It's, yeah. People don't, they really don't understand it necessarily, but it's so important. Yeah. I mean, we pay attention to our, our physical body, right? We want our skin to feel good. We want our, um, our um, organs to be healthy, but then we're not paying attention to our energetic body. And that's really important too. And there's so many outside influences um, affecting that. And if you can, you know, help with the space that you spend the most time in, or just even doing like periodic clearings, like that's, it's like taking a shower. <laughs> so I think it's really important to, to note that. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. So, okay, so let's go back to, you're um, doing the Stephen Greer kind of work. Um, <laughs> so when when you discovered him, so were you doing some of the CE5 protocols that he teaches? Yeah. So when I first watched, so I watched Unacknowledged um, first because I think that came out first. And um, I remember being like the whole time it was going on, I was like nodding and being like, yes, 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 yes. Already, I like already had like a knowing. I'm very like clear cognizant. So like yeah. I just already knew. And it was yeah. just so good to like hear it out loud from like someone else. And then I watched the close encounters of the fifth kind. And that I literally like cried. I like sat on my couch and actually cried because I was like, this is this is the truth. Well, my truth. Um, yeah. this is the truth that I've been looking for and that I've known. And um, it like just intertwined everything spirituality science the ets like i was just like this is this is it this is it. i was like this is it and so um i'm definitely um practice the meditate like meditations and whatever i don't i at first i was kind of nervous i felt a little overwhelmed to do it by myself because one i am not um physically surrounded by other people that have the same ideals as me. I have um, like a mastermind I'm a part of and like my online um, presence, I have people that are on the same page. Um, right. But in my physical life, there's no one like that's quite as deep into this as me. Like I have friends that are like, oh yeah, duh, like aliens are real, but they don't have that spiritual side as well. Um, yeah. And so I haven't really found that, um, that like safety feeling to, to do one of those, um, events yet, but I've done it. Um, I've done like meditations, guided meditations to connect with my cosmic family. Mm -hmm. And, um, I love that. Um, so I haven't, yeah, haven't done the C5 yet, but, um, yeah, I tried once when I was like alone, but I think it's cause I was like really, I was nervous. So I, it, it, yeah, it didn't go through. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, well, I, I'm curious about that nervousness. So what are you, what do you think you're most nervous about? Well, I feel like now, um, that was like when I first, that was a couple years ago. So now I, I, I think I could, like, I feel comfortable um, and I feel way more certain. But I think at that point, I, um, I think I was feeling like, I know this is real. And if I experience this by myself, I feel like, no one, I couldn't even verbally like tell, like I just, I just wanted someone else to experience with me, um, it with me because I felt like it would be such a powerful experience mm -hmm. and it's hard to describe things, um, that are that potent and powerful and impactful when, when you're the only one that's seen it, you know? So I just like, I was like, it's not the time. I think my intuition was telling me like, this isn't the time yet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, and it, it's just, I'm super curious about it because that's one of the things that we give an option on our UFO tours that we do. Oh my and gosh. I go to the, it's like big, I've already looked at you up. When I go to the big island, I'm doing it. Like my husband was even like, I do that. So <laughs> I <even> love that. <laughs> so yeah, because I mean, you know, we have that, the intro tour where we're just giving people information and they get to look at, through the goggles and they get to see the spacecraft. But when people do the exp extended spiritual tour, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and people only sign up for that if they're actually really interested in it, yeah. right? So then you get this group of like-minded people and it's just such a magical experience. That's, that's I think, what, what I want. I want it to be a more of a group situation. And mm -hmm. yeah, I think my, like my 
um, my guides were like, no, not yet. This isn't, this isn't the way, this isn't the time, but yeah. Have you experienced, um, things with your groups? Oh that, yeah. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Well, and so what's interesting though, is that the, um, the ETs that I am fully connected to mm -hmm. and, and now I channel them and they, they've been a bridge to all these other ET groups, but because mm -hmm. I am like almost every night outside, just talking to them and mm -hmm. just intentionally calling them in. I don't even have to do any meditation, you know, mm -hmm. they're just showing up mm -hmm. and, and in different ways, different forms. And really what I, what I do understand is them, you know, doing the meditation, learning how to raise your vibration mm -hmm. and all of that mm -hmm. when you're starting out, I think mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. But once you just know it's just full intention, yeah that's you see i know yeah and it's like you have to like in order for it to fully work and i know this is like there's no fear it's just like love and connection um yeah. who, i know that i definitely have like pleiadian backgrounds which which ones do you connect with do you think well, so my original group that came through were the arcturians oh and so four and a half years ago is when i met the arcturians mm -hmm. and then um this year actually i started i knew there were 13 groups total that wanted to come through and so i was leading these galactic sessions and each session was focused on a different group mm -hmm. and what i know is that each of these groups that i did is just a different aspect of myself mm -hmm. so i was mm -hmm. tapping into my own you know energy mm -hmm. of being that group so mm -hmm. Indian, syrian reptilian zeta yeah I yeah. Um, Blue <laughs> yeah. And that's why you're doing this work right now because you are so you've had all those lifetimes as as that yeah. aspect of yourself. And yeah, that's like I uh, like it's almost makes me speechless. Like I just like I love that. I love yeah. that. And I love that um that you're able to just like be so open about it. Like I love that. Well, yeah. okay. So here, that's something that's interesting that not everyone knows this about mm -hmm. me, but, um, you know, I'm 50 years old and when I was 15 is when I had my first conscious memory of being taken onto a craft. So 35 years ago, I, I was able to have it validated by a former very high government official, which was super cool. Mm -hmm. And I write about that in my book, Connection to the Cosmos, but, wow. um, because in the 1980s, and the 90s and most of the 2000s it's been such a taboo topic i mm -hmm. had to hide myself essentially yeah and so it wasn't until i moved here to hawaii two and a half years ago that i like i was out of mainstream world of real yeah. estate yeah and i was able to start sharing all of my experiences and then when because then i, I was stuck into it mm -hmm. and, just came flooding yes, exactly yes yeah that's i we have so many parallels <laughs> yeah i feel like okay so i as soon as so with the akasha records as soon as i claimed that i can do that it just started flowing in and i know that like again i'm still in this area that is it's not very accepting in general like who knows like i know that you know in maybe by 20, 30 or whatever, this will all come out and it will all be like, we'll be like, yeah, we know, we know we've been here a while, you know, <laughs> but until then it's like, you are that like weirdo. And, um, I'm just really starting to rip off the band-aids and be like, I don't, I don't care anymore. I don't care. Um, yeah. if people like, if let's say a, a real estate client finds my personal Instagram and sees that I'm into all this stuff. Oh, well, Oh, well, right. I'm still a great stager. <laughs> so if you want to stage with me, we don't have to talk about, you know, ETs, but like I can definitely stage your house, <laughs> but um, I'm not out there posting it on my business page, you know, so I'm easing into that. And mm -hmm. I feel like as my life progresses, I definitely see myself fully opening up. It's just yeah. pulling back those layers. Yeah. And, and that's really what it is. And I mean, I spent most of my life really caring what other people thought of me yeah. because I was trying to prove myself and be worthy mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so that was a lot of layers <laughs> of shedding. That's it. 
Yeah. That I feel yeah. like everyone can relate to that and really go through that because it's like, it's literally like coming out of the closet. <laughs> like you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're putting, and, and what I've um, realized is that um, I have felt so, and still do, and I'm working through it, have felt so vulnerable talking about this because it's, it's really who I am. And it's, it's the innermost part of your soul, right? And you're being so vulnerable talking about this, that um, if someone, let's say, were to uh, disagree or say something mean or hurtful, right? Mm -hmm. You might not really care, but it's, it's because you're being so vulnerable and um, raw for who you really are, that it feels like it could be more dangerous, right? Um, to, to you're more easily hurt rather yeah. than the, the facade that you put out as that stager, the professional, the designer, um, that is a part of you, but it's, it's not the deepest, most vulnerable part of right. you. It's just a mask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Right? laughs> One yeah. little aspect of who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. Well, and what I, what I can, share with you and then with the audience too though is that i think the more that energetically you are in an elevated state mm -hmm. that, and and if you need to you know archangel michael blue bubble yourself or whatever <laughs> what whatever you need but to maintain your energy mm -hmm. like i haven't I've, I've not that i want to call this in but i haven't had any um pushback yeah. It's the fear. It's the fear. It's it's like not even reality. It's like the anticipation of what might happen. That right. is like, and then when you really look at it and you take yourself up from a higher perspective and you're like, what, why, why, why are you letting a fear of something that maybe Sally Lou who from high school that you don't care about or talk to might call you weird. Why is yeah. that holding you back from being your true authentic self in this one timeline you have in this body? Right. It's right. Um, Oh, yeah. No, I know. It ruffles my feathers. <laughs> well, funny, you know, when I um, think about graduate school, you know, when I got my PhD and I'm with very hardcore mainstream academics mm. and, you know, and a couple of them knew about my stories, my experiences, and, but everyone else thought, okay, oh, she's a little crazy if I told them. Um, but it's like, I now, I don't care what anyone from, previous lives mm -hmm. within this life, what they think. That's family, friend, former friends, anyone. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm just now stepping into that. And, um, what's gotten me, what really woke me up and like, and it flipped the switch was, I don't remember exactly who said this, but they said, um, purpose over ego, mm -hmm. put your purpose over your ego. And yeah. that to me, it just like, flipped the switch. And I was like, yeah, I, I'm going to put my purpose, my life's purpose here. That's very important to pursue over my, my fear and, um, holding myself back. Like right. literally in my records, I saw myself, um, like I'm trying to walk forward, but I have this rubber band strap and then myself is also back there holding my, me back. Like I'm like holding my, I'm the one holding me back. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I would say that's probably true for everyone yeah. that feels held back. I mean, because really we're just all connected and we are like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah I get it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, and for you too, though, being that, you know, it's in the area that you're in, what I will tell you just, you know, as your older, wiser, <laughs> not, no, not necessarily wiser, just I've been through it. The more that you shine your light and show who you are, you will attract your tribe and they are probably waiting for you to come out. Yeah. See, yeah. There are other people that are, you know, hiding in the shadows. Like, well, I can't do that. But if someone like you is like, this is who I am, this is what I do. Then they're like, Oh good. Me too. And, and what's interesting, when I started writing about my experiences with the ETs, um, I was getting, you know, comments on Facebook and emails saying, just thank you. I feel validated. I feel seen. And so 
I just want to encourage you. Yeah, I've, I've gotten the message about shining my light. So, so over this last year was when I really started to come out in social media, let's say. And, um, I, that's the, that's like the underlining message is like, don't be, don't dim your light for others to feel comfortable. Yeah. Um, just shine your light. And again, people that your, your light's too bright for, they're mm -hmm. going to go, you know, look, they, uh, look elsewhere, right. <laughs> they're going to look away <laughs> and the people that it resonates with, they're going to shine right with you. And so, yeah, I love that advice. It really resonates. And it's like, I 100% agree. And I definitely feel that this is like the new era. I feel like this is, there's going to be such a huge shift coming up in our lifetimes. And I'm like, I have this excitement anticipation of like watching it unravel. I know mm -hmm. there's going to be some like chaos and there might be some like you know, deceptive ideas at first, you know, the government trying to make us think that they're bad or evil to, you yeah. know, promote fear, fear, um, fears, control and all that. But uh, if there's enough of us that really like speak the truth, then yeah. yeah. And I think that there are, I feel like there's plenty of people that it's common sense. If they were, you know, malevolent, that we wouldn't be here right now having this conversation, right? It's been long enough. Yeah, I mean, that comes out on the UFO tours because, you know, I see people from all over the world that come on these tours and, and I'm just like, okay, number one, most of them visiting are our family members. Yeah. And then I'm like, they could have taken over way long ago before we even had nuclear weapons, you know, yes. they've been visiting since yes. the beginning of time. And so, you know, not that there aren't some, mm -hmm. we'll call them service, service to self mm -hmm. individuals, but mm -hmm. like an entire race is not bad. Yeah. It's kind so. of like humans, like there, you know, most of us are pretty good <laughs> and you know, there's some bad apples, <laughs> but most of us are pretty good. And you know, it's, it's, yeah. Why would it be any different? And right. honestly, they're even more loving and, um, and, wanting to help and service to others because they're at that higher consciousness level that is yeah. all about connection and oneness and helping. So yeah. Yes, exactly. So, well, what else do you want our audience to know about? Um, I think something that is coming through right now is the, um, they, when I say they, it's like, I have to like spirit or whatever. The, um, they're talking about like imposter syndrome for some reason, which feels a little bit irrelevant, but <laughs> they're saying that it's, it's important. Um, so I guess imposter syndrome for people that want to step up and be a, let's say a thought leader or, um, a spiritual, um, entrepreneur or someone that does UFO tours and is following their truth. Um, and they feel like, who am I to do that? Um, I'm just, you know, Krista from Virginia, um, or Lisa from where, where, do you, where did you start out? Oh, I, from Olympia, Washington, from Washington. Like why, you know, look at what you're doing now. Look at what I'm doing now. Look what, you know, anyone can do anything they, they set their mind to and truly desire. And you have desires within you for a reason. They're not random. <laughs> They're not just, you know, placed there for no reason. It's because that's something that your soul wants um, you to pursue in this life. And so to follow those intuitions, those little gut feelings and those nudges, um, whether you have the full on confidence right now or not, do it scared, do yeah. it. Yeah. Do it scared. And, um, follow, follow your intuition is what's really coming through. And, um, whether you think that you're capable of it or not, if you have that desire and you set your heart and your mind to it, you can do it. And it can be you, you can be the one to show the way for others. Beautiful. All right. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. And so, um, I guess what is in this spiritual awakening that you've had, what has been like the biggest thing that you have taken away for yourself? Mm -hmm. Maybe um, you understand mm -hmm. that. Um, I mean, we could go a few places there, but I feel like what they're, what's coming through is um, the fear of being seen. Okay. 
So the fear of being seen um, for who you truly are, um, like what we were talking about is who you truly are. You might feel even the most vulnerable um, speaking about it or sharing your truth or showing up as that version of you or pursuing that career or exploring that path. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? What I've realized is, again, that purpose over ego, if you're not going to do it in this lifetime. Why, why would you even have that desire? Right. So, um, really, really stepping up and like I just said, doing it scared. And, um, you know, what, when people are the most vulnerable, right. Isn't that when you relate to them the most, you feel the most connection, you feel the most alive and seen and yeah. So like if you're too afraid and you're holding yourself back and you're being scared to be seen, then that is also how if, if everyone did that, we wouldn't have any connection. <laughs> there wouldn't be any like realness. So um, just like being brave and showing who you are and being as authentic as you can. And um, the more and more you stay authentic, um, the more comfortable you will be being seen for who you really are. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. We'll tell people where they can find you, uh, your website, the socials, all the things. Yeah. So um, I am most active on Instagram. Um, my Instagram is Krista Gray underscore Kirschman, K-I-R-S-C-H-M-A-N. That's my married name. I just haven't like legally changed it yet. So we, we you know, it's there. Um, and then um, I also have my Instagram um for my uh, spirit business, it's refined energy, R E F I N E D energy. And then my website is www.refinedenergy.life, L I F E. And then um, I have my staging business, which you can see on my personal Instagram. If you go there, everything's linked. And um, on my website, all my services are there too. And um, yeah, I'm definitely going to check out your books that you wrote. That's amazing. I um, definitely have on my a uh, list of things I want to accomplish is being an author too. So how inspiring. And I love that. So I'm going to be checking that out. <laughs> Excellent. Well, and so anyone who's watching or listening, if any of what Krista has shared with you sounds interesting, definitely check out her, her services. And if you're in Virginia and you're selling your house, stage it. Staging. Yeah. <laughs> Seems so <laughs> ETs and then staging. <laughs> no, it's, we're multifaceted beings. So yes. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for being on. It's been a true pleasure. And I look forward to continued connection with you. Yes. Yes. And for those of you watching and listening, thank you so much for being here with us. And I'll see you next time on Connection to the Cosmos. Aloha.